Good morning. My name is Brent Wirtz, and it's a privilege to be here. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew 1, verses 18 through 25. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded He had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. You know, as I reflect on this passage, I've often glanced over the impact of the Lord's actions on Mary and Joseph because of the outcome and the birth of Jesus, my Lord and Savior. This time, reading this passage, the Lord took me through a different journey, gave me a different lens to look at and to reveal something new to me. Maybe it's because I have a daughter who's pledged to be married in about six months. This passage of scripture took me down a journey to look at plans that we set that may be disrupted by the Lord and our response to that. So in looking at this, the observations I'm going to share this morning are about Joseph and Mary, you know, being pledged to be married, which was officially or publicly known, yet we see that in the scripture, but she winds up with child. We see Joseph's response, which is quite natural to this news. Although it does not specifically state this, we can infer that he may have been hurt deeply by this news, angry, possibly felt betrayed, doubted Mary's explanation which would have eroded his trust in her and decides to deal with the matters on his own and take it under the law and divorce her quietly. We do see his love for her though by not wanting to expose her to public disgrace. We see Joseph's natural response to this disruption of Mary and Joseph's plans and I certainly can relate to it and I probably would have decided to do the same thing if I were in that situation. The social stigma that comes with this news would have been a disgrace, shame, possibly possibly ostracization by the community, which we see Joseph trying to spare her from. Although I would also contend that he was looking out for his own well-being. But then the Lord intervenes to set the record straight for Joseph. These observations highlight Joseph and he reverts back from a natural response to a faith-filled response of obedience. Although this passage does not specifically deal with Mary's response, I suspect she had similar feelings and thoughts and emotions and doubts and concerns. So when I look at this, how does this apply to me? In my reflection, I examined how I typically respond to God's guidance when it disrupts my own plans. I have to confess that I've responded in the natural. I've responded with frustration and disappointment at times, especially when I feel upset because my expectations aren't being met. I found myself responding in fear or anxiousness when there's uncertainty about what's going to come next or the uneasy feeling of stepping out of my comfort zone. I may respond with questioning God. Do you have the right person? Are you sure you want me to do that? Did I hear you correctly? I can respond with anger resistance at times, trying to hold on to my own plans selfishly and not surrender my will to the Lord. Sometimes I'll rely on my own self-control or try to manipulate a situation so that my plans can also be achieved, not seeking God's guidance or his plans. The natural responses are normal, but the Lord has showed me over time that through my walk, these moments provide an opportunity for growth. As I grow in my relationship with the Lord, my initial reactions become transformed into reactions of trust, surrender, and peace. 
so that I'll no longer respond in the natural, but respond with a faith-filled response, not be concerned about disrupting my plans because they're rooted in trust, humility, and the desire to align with the Lord's will. Practical applications that have helped me as I continually practice trusting is reflecting on God's sovereignty by acknowledging that he's in control and his plans are always good. Reminding myself, even if I don't understand, Lord, I will trust you. And focusing on the scripture that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And the next is surrendering to his will and letting go of my own expectations and asking God to lead me. Typically, I'll do this by praying, not my will, Lord, but yours be done. Trying to remember Psalm 37, 5, to commit my ways to the Lord, to trust him and he will act. Another way that I've done this in the past is to embrace gratitude by thanking God, even in the disruption that he is working despite that disruption, praising the Lord and thanking him for being involved in my life, even when it's hard to see the purpose right now. In those times, I tend to lean on 1 Thessalonians 5.18 that says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ, Jesus, for your, for you. Lastly, I have to step out in faith and obedience, just like Joseph. Even when I don't have the full picture, I must choose to follow where God is leading, even if he's uncomfortable, if it's uncomfortable or unfamiliar, and trust that the Lord's lamp will, will be a lamp to my feet. His scripture will be a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. A faith-filled response requires practice and spiritual maturity, and at a time it becomes and at, over time it becomes easier as I learn to see the disrupt, disruptions as divine opportunities. So as I close in prayer, I just want to reflect on, on what the Lord's done. Let's pray. Father God, I give thanks that you hear my requests, and I praise you that you are the great I am, and the most high and the almighty. And I rejoice and give thanks in your ways that are so much greater than man's. I have to confess that I often don't understand why certain things happen the way they do. And at the times, my natural response response is pity, frustration, doubt, fear, hurt, anger. I strive to fix the circumstances in my own strength. As these things occur, Lord, please transform my perspective so that I may see each moment that this occurs as an opportunity for me to grow in my trust and depth of my relationship with you. Allow my response to be faith-filled rather than a natural response. Please help me to take my eyes off of my circumstances and place them upon you. Please transform my attitude so that I'll consider these trials or circumstances pure joy because your word states that as we face trials of many kinds and testing of our faith, it produces perseverance and perseverance finishes the work so that I may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Therefore, Lord, please allow me to rejoice always, to pray continually, and to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is your will for me in Christ Jesus. I ask all these things in the precious and mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.